tell me I'll monitor you and you tell me how you're doing right and then we got into a conversation he asked me what are your triggers and I'm like what are you talking what about? are you talking about are there triggers are there triggers yeah yeah a coffee addict right so i'm told you know coffee can be a trigger and i'm like uh coffee my favorite no cappuccino <laughs> no you know no, don't, don't yeah, take me don't there don't take me there yeah. and tell uh -huh. me i'm not going to take coffee yeah, yeah. Me, yeah so you're, you're also getting trigger. educated on it yeah you're so getting educated on your condition exactly you... so he's telling me yeah. there are triggers yeah do you get enough sleep I'm like, I like watching movies. At I mean, night. I've got all time in my hand. So what do you expect me to do? At night, I'm watching movies until late. So me, that is also a trigger. I'm like, uh, okay. And, and, you know, and other things yeah. that I used to do, and apparently there were triggers. All of them were triggers. There were night. triggers. Yeah. And there are things that I love doing, like watching movies, uh, drinking my coffee, cup of cappuccino. So, uh, and I got educated. And from there, he, he has worked with me. And I've seen improvement because uh, I started uh, officially with him in, uh, in January. I've with him until now. I haven't had a season, no single one, not a single season. Because you understand exactly what I it is that you're dealing with. I now and, yeah. and I knew how to manage the condition. The, I got the right medication. And you know what your triggers are. I, I knew what yeah. my triggers were. Yeah. I got all the information that I needed to manage this condition. So right now and up to now i haven't had a single season therefore essentially saying that you can live normal with an epilepsy very isn't that? normal very normal very normal Fred, the story is getting a bit interesting you know from 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 this perspective again so let me just put it to you as well and um you you open this conversation by saying that epilepsy is not necessarily a disease. It is a condition that you gotta manage. But throughout this conversation, we're talking about the medication, the, the diagnosis. At what point to get the diagnosis for epilepsy? And number two, what time do I need then to start medication? And who's this person who's gonna, who's gonna need medication in terms of managing the condition? Uh, good question. Now, that throws us back into trying and reflect on the types of, of epilepsy. epilepsy. Yeah. Because if you understand the types, then that gives you an opportunity to know at what point am I supposed to go and see a doctor. It did. Yeah. So there are over 40 types of <laughs> epilepsies. Okay. And we cannot talk about all of them. They are grouped into three. Mm -hmm. Number one, we talk of the generalized seizure. So if you talk about epilepsy, you ask anyone about epilepsy, they'll tell you it's that condition that somebody gets an attack, they fall. That is what we refer to types under that category of generalized seizure. seizures. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then we have partial seizure. Pas uh, partial seizure, you don't have to necessarily get an attack and fall down. Mm -hmm. It could be a hand jacking uncontrollably. To some extent, you cannot really control it, but you won't fall down. Or you have people who have a habit of maybe shaking their head. Yeah. Or maybe they are standing, giving a speech, and they are tapping their feet. Yes. You see, it would basically uh, uh, have that kind of a, a, sim a symptom for a partial seizure yes. for, a, for a moment and then it, it, it dies off. And then we have the, what we call absence seizure. So absence seizure, these are types where a good example would be somebody giving you a blank stare, like you are talking to them and then for a second or for a minute, they just give you a blank stare. You think that they are listening and following. And if you'd had asked a question then, they would come back to you and say, sorry, 
what was that question you were asking me again? Mm -hmm. Very common in children. And this is where we really need to even educate the teachers because a child might be mistaken to be either rude or to be slow in learning. Um, just for you to know that at that point, maybe they have started uh, having a symptom of having some blank stares and having those absence seizure. Because you, as a parent, you tell a child, yes. um, go to the shop and buy me sugar. So before you say sugar, they go blank. They just hear go. And when they come back, they come back with oh, bread. Yeah. Yeah. So as a parent, you, you might even want to, I mean, put in some discipline in that child because you are thinking uh, he's always... Yeah, he's always in his, in his world. In he doesn't his listen to own me. world and yeah. does not listen. Yeah. And it could just be one of the signs that you need to look out to. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we understand these types, then the moment they start happening then that is the time that you need to go to the hospital for you to be checked. Doesn't, because doesn't, they will mm -hmm. be repetitive. I mean, they will always be coming back. Yes. And it's not a good thing to have something that does not appear to be normal that keeps, you know, recurring doesn't. or coming. Mm -hmm. You need to start taking caution at that point in time. We have three minutes for this conversation. I don't understand how one hour is gone. That's, uh, I'm also in a class. Just, I'm, I'm going to give you one minute. Mm -hmm. Question that came in mm -hmm. when we floated the poster mm -hmm. is that do I mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. now need mm -hmm. to go to hospital to get checked also mm -hmm. whether I could actually be mm -hmm. predisposed mm -hmm. to epilepsy? Uh, well, I can answer that question in this way. We can do so many things to prevent ourselves from getting um, injuries, um, brain damages yes. mm -hmm. that can lead us or can put us at a risk yes. of getting epilepsy. So the good thing to do here is to see that you take on every preventive measure that is there. We use a lot of border borders these days. When you get on that border border, the guy has a helmet. Do you have one? Do you have one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you get into that matatu, you put on yourself your self belt. Yes. If the mother is expectant, does she follow the antenatal care? Does she go to the hospital to I check that. at I the mm -hmm. so at the very basic, those are the things that we can do so that we can prevent ourselves yes. from actually uh, uh, exposing ourselves to injuries that can put us at a risk of getting epilepsy. Very much. I've got just one final question for you. Let me yeah. come to Evelyn. Evelyn, we, we only have one minute, by the way, left for this. Your story is deep. It's an example of exactly what goes on in our families when our loved ones go through a condition yeah. that number one they themselves do not understand that we ourselves again do not understand opening us to this conversation now mm -hmm. like, what have you done now mm -hmm. on a family level mm -hmm. just to we're talking about normal yeah. just to be the normal one in the family like mm -hmm. you grew up all the way to adulthood mm -hmm. and also to get this right support mm -hmm. from your family mm -hmm. just in 45 seconds if you may um. When I started getting the right information, I started sharing it with my family yes. so that they can be able to know that uh, I'm not an invalid, right? I'm just, as long as I'm taking my meds and everything, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I'm still Evelyn, right? And also it, um, it prompted me to, to opening my eyes to other people in my community 
who are going through the same and they don't have the right information. Mm -hmm. So it has led me to join hands with different people who are creating awareness on epilepsy yes. and not only epilepsy but also uh, generally people with disability because as you know epilepsy is termed as a disability, disability. as well, right? Yes. So it has prompted me to do that, to educate people more and to find more information to help others in the community, you know. So uh, currently we are planning with some few people to start a, an organization that will give people more information, especially in our community to, to fight off the myths and the misconceptions of yes. such conditions like epilepsy and any other kind of disability in our yes. community. That is what we are working on right now. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, 15 seconds, by the way. Yes. Fred, 15 seconds as we step out. I would like to think as a council that you're also urging the government then to increase the number of professionals that can that deal with epilepsy in the country. Are we making advancements? 15 seconds, if you may. We are so yes. far. And mm -hmm. uh, it's good to understand that epilepsy, apart from being a, dis uh, a disability, yes. it's also under the non-communicable diseases. True. With cancer, diabetes, and the like. Yes. So our call, actually, is when they are making up the budget and these other conditions are also given an upper hand. There is a good cut for that. Please, they should also allocate some very good funding, especially for awareness, because that is what we are still pushing. Nice As an umbrella, all these other organizations that have come together are really trying to do their best. Yes. We have corporates, companies that are supporting the agenda the campaign we have the likes of bank of africa novartis all those are pushing for actually seeing that epilepsy comes out of the shadows so there's still a lot to be done but so far so good even as we prepare for the international epilepsy day yes. on monday yes this saturday we will be at karura we want to engage people in doing a walk covering over 50 million steps because globally right now we talk over 50 million people who of have epilepsy. epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So we want to stand in solidarity with them. You can join us at Karura um, this Saturday from 7 to mm -hmm. take on that walk mm -hmm. so that we can continue to support and raise awareness about epilepsy. Pretty much. There is no better way to end that conversation. Now you do know, by the way. But what is shocking uh, is two professionals. Again, it's 1.5 million. How bad can that get? It is conversations that we need to have. And guess what? We shall be there Monday to join them as well in that um, in the celebration of the World Epilepsy Day. But thank you very much for taking your time for the entire past one hour since we started this conversation, listening to live examples, a true example to our poster headline and our topic yes indeed you can live no more with epilepsy all right we take a short break once we come back ian kitani and i will be taking you straight to what is trending this morning and also the bigger stories that we are going to cover today good morning <laughs>